It's the beginning of the new year. It's time for the 2017 Detroit Auto Show here on RumbleStrip.net and 10 Minute Test Drive. It's going to be an interesting show this year. There's a lot of people missing. Jaguar, Land Rover, Mini, Porsche, Bentley, uh, and, and a few more. So the spacing is a little different this year. The vibe's a little different. All the press conferences are essentially on day one. Is there going to be anything good here this year? Eh, we'll find out. Uh, let's take a flyby and stop in at a few booths and see how it looks this year. Porsche is one of the many brands that didn't show up this year for Detroit. So if you want to see a Porsche, well, officially you can't, but there are two reimagined Porsches by Singer in the Michelin booth. Michelin, of course, showing off their new Pilot Sport 4 tire. Very interesting. We'll uh, touch on that possibly later. Uh, there are two Singers here, though. This one is the Monaco edition. Beautiful blue paint on it. A houndstooth interior that is that will roll in some pictures because it's immaculate. And then the London Commission one up there, uh, which you can also tell is because it's right-hand drive. Now look, if you can't see the official Porsches, at least you can see the Singers. And yes, they're half a million dollars, but you'll spend hours just looking at all the fine details of these. So with GMC's terrain, they have joined the bandwagon of the sort of invisible C-pillar here, joining Nissan, Lexus, and a few others. Styling in general, it's okay but it's a C-segment crossover, so they'll sell pretty much everyone they make because, well, it's a crossover. Inside, yeah, it's nice, especially in Denali trim. Uh, as you'd expect, Denali's are also all, you know, very nice, but you know our love for crossovers. So at the Ford press conference, they very briefly showed off this restyle uh, mid-cycle refresh for the F-150. Obviously a new front end, offering a diesel in it as well. Uh, this vehicle spent maybe 90 seconds on stage. In fact, Ford really didn't show a lot of anything as far as vehicles. They mentioned that the new Ranger is coming. They mentioned the new Bronco. Showed nothing of that. Although there is a super secret squirrel meeting going on in Dearborn right now for very select elite members of the media. They're saying it. They'll not be able to show pictures, but there it is. Uh, Ford really doesn't want to talk about the fact that it makes cars anymore. They want to talk about mobility and transport and the fact that they want to do everything but sell you a car. It's interesting. Now, of course, the uh, new EcoSport B-segment crossovers here. We'll show you a picture of that. And the GT, always here. Hey, it's always good to see that. But And the new Raptors upstairs. Hey, you've seen that. Not a lot from Ford this year. So the big news uh, for Chevrolet at this show is that the Bolt has won the North American Car and Truck of the Year, well, Car for Car and Truck of the Year, right. as predicted by us. Right. Very cool car. Have not yet driven this thing, hoping to drive it uh, in the spring when it becomes more available in the local media fleet. Um, but we've had a chance to get in and out of it, look around it. Very good car, and then from those who we've talked to who've actually driven this thing, they're actually very impressed, the whole one-foot driving and all that. Um, but very cool that for with tax incentives, 30 grand, you can buy an EV car with 240 mile range and not have to spend $100,000 like you would with a Tesla or wait till 2019 for possibly the Model 3 to be coming out. So the two bits of news coming from Honda are of course the Ridgeline winning truck of the year for Nactoy, which having just driven that, we fully endorse. And of course, the new Odyssey, the minivan from Honda. And we had a chance to look at this at a media preview holiday party about a month ago. Actually very impressed. A full-size adult can actually fit in the third row. Uh, it has a very cool second seat uh, that slides you know, left, right, back, and forth, making it very easy for kids. If you're in the parent thing or you've got multiple kids, it's actually a pretty good vehicle. It'll be interesting. We'll uh, probably have a chance to drive it sometime later in the year. So Mercedes showed off the Concept EQ. This is their electric crossover vehicle, uh, showing sort of some styling directions that they may be going in over the next few years, on top of the fact that they are announcing that they are going to be doing 10 uh, electric vehicles between now and 2025. They also showed off the CLA AMG, uh, talking 0 to 60 in 4.4, 4.5 seconds. Uh, a couple editions of the uh, GT GTC, and also announcing a future uh, hybrid supercar with a thousand combined horsepower and a 25 kilometer range on just the batteries. 
Audi showed off three different models for their debuts. Uh, of course, the most important one is the Q8. It's an electric crossover SUV vehicle. They're going to call it the most luxurious crossover they've ever done, uh, trying to compete with high-end Range Rover. Uh, you know, production-ready kind of concept. Sure, we should probably look to see this thing in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. Of course, they also showed off the S5 Cabriolet. Good-looking car, should sell well, Miami, LA. And the SQ5 crossover, which of course is more the more high-performance version of the new Q5. Uh, you know, a few other things to see here uh, in the Audi booth, but these are the three announcements from them. BMW showed off a new 5 Series. Really not that interesting, to be honest with you. What's really interesting at the BMW booth is this. The uh, M6 GT3 Racer. And of course, the Bathurst 12 Hours is just a few weeks away, so we'll be interested to see how this does there. Uh, there'll be three of them racing there. Really cool, uh, obviously glassed off, you can't see much of it, but from what you can see in the distance, very cool race car. It's not really hyperbole to say that the future of Volkswagen in North America greatly depends on the success of the Atlas. We're seeing it here in person for the first time, and in general, it's okay looking. I mean, it's not spectacular to look at, but, you know, people who are buying this kind of vehicle aren't really interested in it. Look, inside, it's nice, it's well done. Certainly in the higher line trims, it's very well done on the inside. Third row seating seems to be pretty good. Also, we got to see the new Tiguan, which is, they call it a 5 plus 2, but if you really want to look at the third row, it's not really usable. But as a 5 passenger, kind of C-segment crossover, not bad. And then they showed off the, uh, the Buzz, which is their electric bus. Buzz, electric, yeah, kind of get it, dumb name. Uh, the other thing is they're talking about it only being out uh, in 2022, five years from now. It's a little late to the game. Uh, they need to accelerate that time frame, and it's essentially a concept that they've been looking at for a number of years in some form or another. But uh, really, future Volkswagen really hinges on this and the new TIG one. Toyota brought in Akio Toyota to show off the new Camry. Uh, this is more than a mid-cycle refresh. This is a pretty big redo. They showed off several different versions. This one is actually rather hot, kind of white pearl with a black top and a red leather interior. But of course, they show the hybrid, the XSE. Uh, obviously, very important vehicle for Toyota. They sell well north of 400,000 of them. Uh, the Toyota also talked about how they are about ready to invest another $10 billion in the next five years uh, in North America. So. Pretty interesting, and you know, we you know our feelings on the Camry. It's it's an all right car. We understand why everyone buys it. It's not terribly interesting to us. So the new Lexus LS is also debuted here at the Detroit Auto Show, and of course a very important vehicle for Lexus. This is their sort of brand brand halo car, the one that kind of kicked off the brand itself. So very well done, very well executed. It's a little larger than you kind of expect it to be. Uh, granted, it is a full-size luxury car. Uh, however, it is large, as we just said. Some great details throughout the car, uh, both inside and out. Obviously set up for to be a sort of executive luxury vehicle. Um, driving dynamics, never necessarily the thing with this, but uh, it looks to be very well done. Volvo decided to troll all of the world's automotive journalists with this particular car, the new V90 station wagon. Now, why are you saying they're trolling, trolling the uh, automotive journalists? Well, okay, it's not a manual, it's not diesel, but it is a brown wagon from Europe. Of course, no automotive journalist can afford to buy this thing to begin with until it's about 10 years old, but eh, nice troll job. Nice surprise in the Brembo booth this year is a bit of motorcycle porn, and that is, of course, an Aprilia MotoGP bike. This is ex Stefan, Stefan Brottle, uh, Grassini Aprilia team. And yes, it's as beautiful in person as you would expect a multi million dollar prototype MotoGP machine to be. Exceptional details, the welding on this thing, and the swing arm is amazing. Carbon fiber work. Well, you know. It's a bit of work art. It does well, it's Italian. Well, that's gonna wrap up our coverage of the 2017 Detroit Auto Show. Bit disappointing, actually fairly disappointing, very quiet. Uh, as we said at the open, a lot of people missing and it's noticed. No Porsche, 
no Bentley, uh, you know, no Mini. So, is that a trend? Is that a dip? Hard to say. So, this is how impactful it was. When Toyota and Lexus are essentially win the auto show, not that it's bad, the Camry is a very important car for them, the LS is sort of the flagship, no, that sort of it is the flagship for Lexus, okay, you understand that. But there was nothing truly exciting, it was a bit of a meh year. And when all the press conferences were on day one and day two is sort of running around just trying to catch up, hmm, like I said, need to re rethink some things. So, overall, kind of a, just an average show. But, hey, we'll be back here next year to cover it. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you next time on rumblestrip.net and 10-Minute Test Drive.